Welcome to the Orthoclips podcast series, and in the next several episodes, we're going to go into the Ortho Time Machine, where we travel back in time to uncover the moments that shaped orthopedic surgery as we know it today. I'm Saqib Rahman, and in this episode, we're delving into one of the greatest milestones in our field, the development of total hip arthroplasty by the brilliant Sir John Charney. Sir John Charnley's work didn't just change orthopedics, it changed lives. Millions of people around the world owe their mobility to the groundbreaking discoveries that Charnley made in a small hospital in England. But what was his journey like? How did this quiet, determined surgeon overcome failure after failure to revolutionize joint replacement? Buckle up, because today we're diving into a story of persistence, ingenuity, and a bit of serendipity. To understand Charnley's journey, we need to go back to the early 20th century. Born in 1911 in the industrial town of Bury, England, John Charnley grew up in a world defined by mechanics. His father was an engineer, and young John initially set out to follow in his footsteps. But a twist of fate led him to pursue medicine, where his engineering mindset would later prove invaluable. Charnley graduated from the University of Manchester in 1935, and his surgical career began to take shape during World War II. Stationed in Cairo, he treated soldiers with complex fractures, gaining hands-on experience that would plant the seeds for his future work. But it wasn't until the late 1940s, after the war, that his focus sharpened on a singular daunting problem, severe hip arthritis. At that time, Treatment options for end-stage hip disease were pretty grim. Patients were often confined to wheelchairs, enduring constant pain, early attempts at hip replacement using materials like glass, ivory, or metal had pretty dismal success rates. Infection, implant failure, and severe pain were common. The surgical community was skeptical that a durable, pain-free hip replacement could even exist. But Charnley was not one to accept limits. He once wrote, The history of medicine is filled with stories of impossible feats, and I was determined that hip arthritis would not remain one of them. By the 1950s, Charnley had settled at Wrightington Hospital in Lancashire, a modest facility that would become the epicenter of his work. Wrightington was not a grand state-of-the-art hospital. It was, in fact, an old tuberculosis sanatorium. Yet for Charnley, it was the perfect place. Here, away from the spotlight, he could experiment and innovate without distraction. His first big idea? Reducing friction. He theorized that the key to a successful hip replacement was in minimizing wear between the joint surfaces. He initially tried Teflon, the material known for its low friction that's widely used in non-stick pans. We all know about that. It seemed promising at first. Charnley implanted Teflon hips in several patients, and the early results looked good. But within a year, Teflon began to wear out, caused severe pain, loosening of the implants, and uh, this was really not going to be acceptable. In his journal, Charnley noted, Failure is a relentless teacher, but I realized that each setback brought me closer to the answer. Undeterred, Charnley went back to the drawing board, and eventually he found a material that changed everything, high-density polyethylene. This material was not only smoother and more durable than Teflon, but it also stood up to the demands of daily joint movement. So this, poly, as we know it today, was the breakthrough. The next challenge was fixing the implant securely to bone. Early prostheses relied on mechanical fit alone, leading to instability and early failure. But Charnley, with his engineering mindset, believed in a different solution, bone cement. He turned to polymethyl methacrylate, or PMMA, which we all know today, uh, and that had been used in dentistry. Charnley refined its use in orthopedics, developing a precise technique 
to anchor the implant to the patient's bone. And this cement not only provided immediate stability, but also distributed that stress across the implant, reducing the risk of loosening. So by the early 1960s, Charnley had all the pieces of the puzzle. He paired a stainless steel femoral head with a polyethylene acetabular cup fixed in place with bone cement. The first successful low friction arthroplasty was performed in 1962, and the results were remarkable. Patients who had been immobile for years were walking pain-free within weeks of surgery, Word quickly spread and Charnley began receiving patients from across the UK and beyond. One of his early patients, a woman named Mary, described the experience years later. Before the operation, I thought my life was over. The pain was unbearable. But after the surgery, I walked again. It was like being given a second chance at life. Charnley wasn't just an innovator. He was a meticulous scientist, and he tracked every case, compiling data on outcomes, complications, and implant longevity. His commitment to evidence-based practice laid the foundation for modern orthopedic research, especially in joints. Sir John Goodfellow, a contemporary and admirer, once said, Charnley's genius wasn't just in creating a new procedure, but in proving scientifically and rigorously that it worked. By the 1970s, Charnley's technique had become the gold standard for hip replacement. Hospitals around the world adopted his methods. Orthopedic surgeons traveled to Wrightington to learn from the master himself. His innovations didn't just improve surgical outcomes, they transformed patients' lives, giving them back their independence and mobility. In 1977, Charnley was knighted by the Queen for his contributions to medicine, therefore Sir John Charnley. But despite the accolades, he remained humble. He often said that his greatest reward was seeing patients walk without pain. In his later years, Charnley reflected. The hip is the most complex joint in the human body, and to have unlocked its secrets is a privilege I will cherish forever. Charnley passed away in 1982, but his legacy endures. Today, over one million Hip replacements are performed annually, and many of the principles Charnley developed remain unchanged. What can we learn from Charnley's journey? Well, first and foremost, the power of perseverance. Innovation in medicine just doesn't happen overnight. It's the result of countless failures, hours of reflection, and the courage to keep pushing forward. His story is also a reminder of the importance of thinking outside the box. By combining principles from engineering and dentistry, Charnley created something entirely new, an approach that not only succeeded, but really reshaped the field of orthopedics and I think patient care and medicine today. Thank you for joining us on this first journey through the Ortho Time Machine episodes. Sir John Charnley's work reminds us that even the most daunting challenges can be overcome with ingenuity and persistence. In the next episode, we're going to explore another revolutionary figure, Dr. Gavriel Ilazarov, and his innovative method for limb lengthening and deformity correction. You don't want to miss it. This is Saga Burman, and this has been the OrthoClips podcast series. See you next time.